Welcome everyone to the very first lecture of the Statistics for the Behavioral Science course. I'm really excited for this semester because it's the first time that I've placed the lectures online for students to review. And I think you will benefit tremendously from this. This will allow you to go back at any time that's convenient for you and review the lectures as many times as you like or to go back and just review difficult concepts or explanations that you may not have got the very first time you listened to the lecture. Uh, I think statistics is a very tough class and there are some students who do struggle with this course, but I do think it is very manageable, especially if you put in the time and you use successful study habits. As you go through this very first lecture on general study tips, you'll notice a few things about the online lectures. You'll notice that following segments of the lecture, there will be quiz questions. Now these quiz questions are there to help test you on the material that was just covered, uh, and it's perfectly okay for you to go back to the video segments and find answers if you do not know them. The focus of these online lectures is for you to learn the material, not necessarily on testing you about the material. Testing will come later as you take the exams. Now we just want you to get used to uh, the material itself. I highly recommend that as you view these online lectures that you also have a notepad handy and that you take notes like you would with a normal lecture. Now the advantage to you of course is that when it comes to in-class quizzes I will let you use your notes that you wrote down from these lectures to help you with those quizzes. Now also because you receive credit for watching these videos there are several validation measures embedded in the lecture. Now these validation measures are to let me know if you've actually watched uh, the video. If you don't happen to pass these validation measures, uh, I will let you know and we can talk about how to better utilize the online lectures. Now because statistics tends to be a very difficult course, I want to go ahead and start the semester off talking about general study tips. Now based on students from previous semesters, most of those successful students had to change their study habits from what they normally used in other college courses. So uh, I spent four years as an academic advisor advising students who are on academic warning and ap academic probation. And those students who utilized these tips that I'm about to share with you end up having very successful college careers. One successful student that stands out to me uh, quite vividly from my time as an academic advisor was a student who was suspended for a year because of poor grades. Now when he came back from his suspension, uh, his grades improved dramatically. He posted a 389 GPA his first semester back, and the following semester he posted a 4.0 GPA. And so I sat down and I asked him, well what was different from before you were suspended to after you were, sus you were suspended? And he said his mentality had changed. He realized that to be successful in college required a lot of hard work. And in his mind, he viewed courses as 80% hard work and 20% intelligent. That if you worked hard, you were going to be successful. And so that's why I think the Auburn Creed stands out, especially when we're talking about study tips, is that hard work pays off. And so... In our Auburn Creed, we believe that this is a practical world and that we can count only on what we earn. Therefore, we believe in work, hard work. And that's what statistics is. It's mostly hard work. Most of the concepts that we learn in this course are not very difficult. The hardest computation that we will use is a square root function. Everything else is multiplication, division, adding, and subtracting. And so there's a lot that goes into doing statistics. There's a lot of little, little processes that go into place. But at the end of the day, it's just a lot of work. And if you put in the work, you will be successful in this course. Okay, so now that the introduction is, is out of the way, let's actually go ahead and get into some content and some study tips. Now, uh, statistics itself takes time. That no matter what you do, if you don't have the time, you are not going to do well in the course. Because like I mentioned before, it is a lot of work. So if we go to the Tiger Cub, we realize that the university expects every student to spend two to three hours outside of class for every hour that it, they spend in class. Now I think for most courses, 
uh, that's not necessary. And I, and I think a lot of you have gone through many of your courses and done well and have not put in that time every every week. But statistics, being a difficult course, is one of those courses I think requires that time commitment. So in order to be successful, you have to make sure you have the time to be successful. And so we can estimate, just based on the Tiger Cub, how much time you should be spending on this course. And this, again, is for the average student. So if you spend four hours in lecture, that means you should be spending between eight and 12 hours studying outside of class times. Now in this course, these lectures will be part of that outside class study. Because we're flipping the classroom, we'll do more activities and worksheets and quizzes in class to make sure you know the material. But the biggest thing is to go through your planner and make sure that you have between 12 and 16 hours dedicated to this course a week. Now another tip that you've heard before is that you should be reading the textbook. And I think for statistics this is pretty important uh, because now you're going to use more of your, your, your senses. So instead of just listening to a lecture, not just seeing the PowerPoint presentation, but also if you're reading and thinking about the material as you're reading, then you will better remember the material. And so as you read the text, uh, don't just uh, pass your eyes over the text and said that you've read it, but actually read it. And as you read, ask and answer questions that you think may be important. And if you have questions that you can't answer from the reading or from the lecture, then please come and ask myself or ask Shu, and we'll be more than happy to, to help you out. Now, as you're going through the textbook as well and you're going through problems, uh, feel free to create your own examples to help you better understand the material. You will understand the material better if you come up with your own examples than if you use the examples that are in uh, the textbook. But all that comes down to is, is having the time to read the textbook successfully. In addition to reading the textbook, you should also be watching the online lectures and attending class and also the labs. Every component of the course is designed for you to be successful with this material. So all of them are in, important. And so watching the lectures or attending class or attending labs are not substitutes for reading. Attending class is not a substitute for, for lectures. Uh, you should be doing all of these. And the more of these components that you participate in, the better you will do in the course. Now, research has shown that to really understand the material of a course, that you need to see that material at least three times. So that means if you are reading, if you're watching the online lectures, and you're attending your class in labs, then you're going to be exposed to that material at least three times. And that will help you do better and help you recall the information when it comes to an exam. Now another thing that I would like to mention here also is that as you watch the online lectures, take notes like you would if you were reading. There's a lot of information to remember, and research has shown that after two hours following a lecture, if students haven't taken notes, then they have already lost 50% or half of the content that was presented in that lecture. Two days later, they lose another 50% which means that after two days from a lecture, if a student hasn't taken notes and not reviewing those notes, then they've lost a total of 75% of the material that was presented in that lecture. So make sure you take notes as well. Make sure you're reviewing those notes. And I've already talked about that. If you take notes, you'll be able to use those notes when it comes to in-class quizzes. So there is a, an advantage to note taking in this course. Most students complete classwork or homework for a course. The difficulty comes is actually understanding the work that they just completed. And so a lot of students try to get through an assignment to say it's done, they have other things they want to get to, but they don't take the time to understand that particular work that they're, that they're doing. And that becomes a problem when it comes to an exam because the exams are, are very much conceptual based and they require you to understand the material, not just to memorize it. And so make sure that as you're doing the classwork, you're doing the worksheets, you're participating in the activities, uh, and you're solving the problems that are presented in lab and in class, that you make sure you take the time to understand what was just uh, completed. Uh, because if you just try to, re to memorize or remember, this course would be very, very difficult for you. And so uh, the course, again, is set up for you to do well in the exams, but not just by completing the work, 
by but by also understanding the work and that's where you're actually going to do well in the course is if you make sure you understand the concepts that are, are talked about and so not surprisingly uh, the work we do in class are strong predictors of exam scores and so if you understand the classwork if you understand the worksheets then you're going to most likely do well on the exams this next point I can't emphasize enough. Make sure you're preparing for exams. And so there's two things here I want to talk about. Uh, the first is don't procrastinate. And the second is make sure you're using all the resources that are available to you. And so uh, as you're preparing for exams, don't wait until the day before or two days before the exam to really start studying. Start earlier. Distribute your learning so that you'll be able to better retain the information when it comes to the exams. Surprisingly, research has shown that uh, students who cram versus students who distribute their learning actually don't perform any differently when it comes to a single exam. Where the differences lie is in how much they retain. And so students who cram do not retain as much information as students who distribute their learning or start earlier with, with learning. And so with a course like statistics, that's critical because this course itself, statistics, just by nature, is cumulative. Everything we learn early in the semester, we'll see later in the semester. And statistics itself builds on itself. And so it's constantly using the information that we used previously. And so if you're cramming, then you're unnecessarily relearning material over and over and over again. And by the time you get to the end of the course, uh, you haven't been efficient and you use more time and you're probably more frustrated than students who distribute their learning and make sure they understand the material as they go along. And so as you listen to an online lecture, as you complete coursework in the class, uh, make sure that you're studying and make sure that you're preparing for the exam as we go along. And don't wait until the day before or two days before for you really start preparing for the exam. Now the other thing I want to talk about is just making sure that you're using all the resources that are available to you. And so there's three three resources that are available to help you with the exams and those are the practice exams, the module concepts handouts, and the classwork that we complete in the class itself. And so the practice exams do a couple things for you. One is it lets you know exactly the format of the exam. And so you'll find that the questions are very similar if not the same as it is from the practice exam to the actual exam. The only real difference is the scenario uh, between the two, and so the context will be different, but the questions will be pretty much the same. The other thing that the practice exam does for you is that if you start early enough, you can find those areas or those concepts that you're not that you're not doing well in or you're not understanding, and then you can come and see myself or the GTA, and we can get those those questions or those those concerns resolved before you take the actual exam. Now the, the module concepts handouts are there to help you with the conceptual material. And so in the exams, you'll, you'll be asked to do some computational work, but you'll also be asked to explain and interpret what you're doing. And that's where the module concepts handout helps you, is that you can know beforehand that the concepts that you should know before going into the exam. Uh, those handouts, those concept handouts, will also help you in preparing for the in-class quizzes because a lot of those questions from the in-class quizzes stem from those concepts that are on the handout. So I, I recommend that as you view the online lectures that you go ahead and print out those concepts, uh, concept handouts and, and follow along and make notes uh, so that when it comes to the in-class quizzes, when it comes to the exam, that you will do well on both of those. And then lastly, make sure you're completing the classwork, and we've talked about this already, so I don't think I need to spend too much time on this, but the classwork is also designed to help you with the exams. We'll talk about the difficult uh, concepts that usually give students problems, and so hopefully when you come to the exam, if you understand those, those classwork and those concepts, then you're going to do well. You're going to be prepared for the exam. This next tip is probably the most important, and that's the study with other students in the class. So Bill McKeechee, he is a researcher of teaching and learning, and he's made a career out of studying this particular field. In other words, how do students learn best and what are the most effective teaching methods? And uh, one of the conclusions that he makes, and this is his argument, is that the most effective method of learning is students learning from other students. And he makes this argument in a few different in a few different ways. And, and one is that if you think about everything that you have learned, the majority of it has been from your friends or from your peers. 
Uh, the other point that he makes is that there is limited contact between students and professors or students in lectures, whereas there's much more availability of contact among student peers in a classroom. He also says that uh, students, if they're interacting with their peers, it provides an opportunity for students to explain the material to someone else, in addition to having that material explained uh, to them. So uh, it reminds me of a quote by Albert Einstein. Uh, Albert Einstein said that you don't know anything until you can explain it to your grandmother. And I don't think he was trying to be sexist there. I think you could say grandfather as well. But what his argument is that if you can't explain it to someone else, then you don't really know it. And so studying with other students gives you that, op gives you that opportunity to explain something to someone else to make sure that you really know it. So as you're studying with your peers or studying in your groups, uh, don't just listen to explanations of, of difficult concepts, but be able to explain them back. It pays to be the tutor, not to be tutored. So make sure that you, you understand the material and that you can explain it to someone else. What's also nice about study groups is that you can hold each other accountable for the material that, that you're learning. You can quiz each other on the material. And so if you're, if you're forming study groups, if you're working with your peers, it provides a, a tremendous opportunity for you to, to learn the material. Um, if you do work in study groups, my, my, my warning would be is to make sure that you are productive in those study groups. Uh, unproductive study groups will use that time to be social rather than to learn the material. So as you're working with your peers, make sure that you come prepared, make sure that you stay on task, uh, and that you help each other with the material. And if you do, then you will learn that material better than a student who's going to try to learn it by themselves. This next tip is near and dear to my heart, uh, and that is to come to office hours. I think sometimes students are intimidated by their professors and they don't want to approach them uh, for, for various reasons. Sometimes they, they feel like they're, they're bothering them. Sometimes they, they feel like the professor doesn't care about them. Or maybe they are intimidated uh, by the professor. Whatever it may be, uh, but just realize that those office hours are there for you. And uh, that's your time. And so if you come to office hours, I'll drop everything to help you because that is, that is your time. And I want to meet you. I want to get to know my students. And I think and I hope that you know that already from the first day of class. I want to get to know you uh, by name. I want to know something about you. Uh, and if you come to office hours, that helps me as well. And so don't feel like you need to come to office hours just because you don't know something. If you want to explain a concept to me to make sure that you understand it, that's fine. Come on in. Uh, if you want to talk about preparing for grad school, I'm okay with that as well. I mentioned I was an academic advisor, so we can talk about that. Um, if you're trying to, uh, you want to know as far as what classes take in the future or whatever it may be, feel free to, to, to come by. If those office hours are your time to get whatever questions you have answered. Please use them. Um, uh, I, I don't mind students coming in. In fact, I encourage it. And like I said, I want to get to know you. So come to office hours. Both me and Shu have office hours. We both would love to, to see you. So, so come on in. This next tip tends to be a surprise for students. But uh, in this course, there is nothing that we talk about that is not available on the internet for free. Everything in this course is free access. If you do a Google search, you're going to find t-tests, you're going to find standard deviations, you're going to find interpretation for confidence intervals. It's all out there already uh, online. Now, of course, as, as students, the reason why you're paying tuition for this course is because unless the course curriculum required you to take this course, you're not likely to go look up statistics on your own and learn it on your own. And so that's what the course is for. The course is for structure to help you understand the material and to help you walk through it. But just realize that everything we talk about in this course is available online already. And so that means it becomes an excellent resource if you have a quick question. You can go ahead and go online to, to, to Google, do a Google search, uh, and you might be able to get a, a better explanation than I can give or you may be able to get an example or something like that. So don't be afraid to use the internet or the library. Um, there's nothing in this course that's not already out there. Uh, and so feel free to use that as a resource as well. That can be particularly useful if it's the night before an exam and you can't contact myself or the GTA. Uh, you may want to just uh, poke around on the internet and see if you can get your question answered there. So just realize that's available to you. There's nothing in here that's a secret. Nothing in this course that's a secret that you can't find 
online. So this next one I've already talked about as far as distributing your learning, don't procrastinate. And so I'm not going to spend much time on here. Just as a reminder, don't wait until the day before or two days before the exam to start studying. Uh, start earlier, get your questions answered. And so I'm not going to kick a dead horse here. We'll move on. But just realize, don't wait till the last minute. In this course, uh, waiting till the last minute is, is, is a killer, especially later in the semester uh, when it gets more complicated and uh, and you haven't learned the things that you need to learn from the previous uh, modules. Uh, it can be very detrimental to you. So make sure you distribute your learning that you're continually practicing as we go throughout the semester. There are several extra credit opportunities available in the course to help you out in those situations where you may lose points to no fault of your own. Sometimes you have to miss class because you're sick or because uh, your car is not working or maybe you're preparing for an exam and something unexpected happens that prevents you from from studying as well so like maybe you have three other exams and, and other courses all those things happen that's life that happens and so the extra credit opportunities are, are there to help you uh, in those cases where things beyond your control happen and so my suggestion is to make sure you maximize those extra credit opportunities uh, you don't want to get to the end of the course and find out that the difference between the grade you got and the grade you grade you could have, or the next grade higher, uh, was a difference in extra credit points had you had you completed. So my advice is make sure you maximize those extra credit opportunities. Um, don't leave any of those the, those points on the table. You have up to 25 extra credit points that you can accumulate this semester. Um, do your best to to get all of them. Uh, where you'll get most of those extra credit op, uh, points is going to be when you're here on review days. Uh, those review days are there to help you with an exam, so you're going to benefit from that, but also I'll give you some extra credit uh, if you're here. And that helps to make up, again, for those days that you're absent or, or, or absent or those, those, those things that are beyond your control that have affected your, your grade. When it comes to long-term success, this last tip is probably the most important, and that's to be flexible in your thinking and increase your capacity to solve problems. What I'm talking about is what we call cognitive ability and it is the single best predictor of your success in your profession. It accounts for 40% of the variability, which means that 40% of the reason why people are successful depends on their ability to think, to solve problems, and to be flexible. So instead of trying to go through your courses and statistics as well, but your courses in general, trying to memorize definitions or factual information, Instead, try to understand that material. Try to apply that material to novel and new situations. Ask how this, this material can help solve problems. Because when you do that, you expand your ability to think cognitively. And as you do that, you increase your chances of being successful later in life. Um, students are usually surprised to hear that cognitive ability is the single best predictor of professional success. They're probably more surprised to realize that a student's GPA only accounts for 10% of professional success. So just 10%, that means 90% of someone's success has to do with other things other than college GPA. And students are typically shocked to hear that when it comes to professional success, that having a degree accounts for only 1% of your success. So when you think about it, just getting a degree only accounts for a very, very small fraction, 1%. That means 99% of why people are successful in their professions has to do with other things other than getting a degree. And that probably makes a, a little bit of sense. We can all think of people who didn't get college degrees and are very successful. We can probably think of individuals who got college degrees uh, and aren't very uh, successful. Uh, and so you can see why that, that, that percent would be so... Uh, so low. Now certain professions uh, your degree is very much important so when we say 1% that's 1% on, on average. And so I just want to reiterate the fact that when it comes to this class when it comes to just courses in general what you really want to be doing is building your ability to solve problems increasing your cognitive ability. A lot of times students will, will go through the material and they try to memorize, memorize definitions and factual information to get them through the next exam, to get them through the course so that they can get their degree without realizing they missed a lot of opportunities to increase their cognitive ability, which would later increase their chances of being very successful. So I just want to warn you, don't fall into 
that trap. So as you approach this course and your other courses, ask those why and those how questions. Things like, why is this formula important? How do we know there are differences in averages? And so as you learn material, ask those how and why questions. Uh, as a father, you hear that a lot when you have a young child in your home. You have a child that always asks why. And so you get an explanation, they ask why again. So why, why, why? And as a parent, you kind of get annoyed at it, but that's how they learn. And so as students, it's the same thing. If we really want to learn uh, how to be more more successful, then we have to ask those why and those how questions and not just try to memorize or just to take things at, at face value. So I challenge you to do that this semester as well. Okay, so that concludes the very first lecture of this semester. Uh, please note that uh, the lecture is not technically done yet, so after you get done with this particular screen here, you'll be you'll be asked to move forward. You click on the arrow at the bottom of your screen, and then uh, it'll, you'll be given some quiz questions that cover some of the material. Feel free to go back and look at the, the lecture. Uh, if you don't know the answers to any of those, those questions, that's fine. And then also, following those quiz questions, there is an activity that uh, I'd like you to, to do um, prior to coming to class tomorrow. So in class tomorrow, we'll go over this activity. We'll go over the results of this activity, and we'll talk about it uh, as we introduce statistics officially and start actually covering some statistics material. So thank you again for, for watching this, this lecture. I, I hope it benefits you. I hope you make changes to your study habits. I hope you have a successful semester, and please let me know uh, what I can do to, to help you. I want you to do well in this course. Um, I want you to, to do well in life in general. So so please take those opportunities to, to, to get help when you need them for myself or from the GTA. All right, thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow.